Thus began the siege of Leningrad, a siege that was to last for nearly 17 months. In Leningrad, as everywhere else in Russia, the winter came early that year. A cold, hard winter, the hardest in years. But here, unlike everywhere else in Russia, the winter wasn't an ally, but an enemy. Here, the 10, 20, 30 below zero temperatures could only mean more suffering, more hardship. In the trenches outside the city, trenches of snow and of ice, the defenders stuck firm to their oath to die if necessary, but not to go backward one more step. And the enemy, in spite of all its efforts, was stopped at the very gates of the city. A city now facing disease, famine, destitution. There was no oil for fuel, no power for the electric lines, but the people defied the elements and trudge the necessary miles to lathe and workbench. The pipes froze, water was shut off, so they dug holes through the streets until they could get to water. There was no food, and the whole city went on starvation ration. The factory worker got eight ounces of bread a day. Everyone else, child and adult alike, only four. And to keep the dread enemy of disease from stalking the streets of their city, an army of women worked with shovels, worked with picks in those streets every day, clearing away the rubble, the refuse, the sources of contamination. Bombs from the air couldn't force the defenders of Leningrad to surrender. Winter couldn't do it. Hunger couldn't do it. So the Germans decided to shell them into surrender. For days, long-range guns hurled ton after ton of high explosives into the heart of the city. were shelled, the harder they worked. of high explosives, cut off entirely from the rest of Russia, with only their own hands to depend on. Their determination never faltered. Every day, more people died of cold, disease, hunger. This was Leningrad in its darkest hour. And then a miracle happened. To the west of Leningrad is the Baltic Sea, and to the east and north is Lake Ladoga, 7,000 square miles of inland water. The Finns and the Germans occupied one border of the lake to about this point, and in the south, the Germans controlled the lake to here. Between these two points was a stretch of lakefront still in Russian hands, but there was nearly 100 miles between this shore and the beleaguered city. A hundred miles of what had been open water and was now snow-covered ice. Across this frozen surface now went tractors, sledges, carving a road across the lake. Soon across this highway, from the far side of the lake, poured a stream of trucks, bringing in food, oil, 
grain, fuel, truckload after truckload of fresh life for the people of the city. Too late, the Germans discovered that they had left one avenue of rescue open. bombed the road, but the trucks kept rolling by day and by night. The lake highway remained open, and soon more than trucks would reach the city, for the Russians were now laying a track across the ice. To the heroes of Leningrad, says the inscription on this locomotive as it starts its pioneer voyage. From the far shore of the lake, it brings food, medicine, supplies of all kinds. Across the lake and into Leningrad, this train is but the first of many. Trains that not only brought in supplies, but that could take out the wounded, the sick women, the half-frozen children. All those that needed better care. All winter long, the lake traffic continued. And all through that terrible winter, the men of the Red Army, outside the city, found the strength not only to defend, but to attack. Time after time, they hurled themselves against the invader, driving him inch by inch back from the city's outskirts. And then spring came. Spring. Outside Leningrad, the snows begin to thaw, and German bodies are washed from their icebox graves. Mute evidence of Russian tenacity. The warm breath of spring is felt, too, on the frozen surface of Lake Ladoga. But the trucks continue to roll, even though the ice is melting beneath them. as it invariably does, comes to the city, too. But spring is more than a new season to the people of Leningrad. It's a new life. The city begins to breathe again. For the first time in months, the trolleys ran. That first day, it seemed that every man and woman and child in the city had to go for a ride. This was life again. Life for the Leningrad children that weren't killed by Nazi bombs or by the horrible winter. Life for the Russian wax, the women of the Red Army. And for the Russian waves, the women of the Red Fleet. And for the sailors of the fleet themselves, the artists of the famous ballet theater have come to offer entertainment. is here. Summer is coming. And Leningrad is still free. Although some Germans did finally succeed in getting into the city. But under different circumstances than they had anticipated. Yes, here too the legend of Nazi invincibility was shattered against the iron will and courage of a determined people. The citizens of Leningrad have proved that generals may win campaigns, 
but people win wars.